Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do a little bit of uh, mixed media work. Um, you're going to see some mistakes and you're going to have some fun. And what we're going to be making is this hipster card. And this is the uh, part of the Tim Holtz Hipsters, Halloween Hipsters set. And I'm going to use Dude. So I'm going to be using multiple stamps from multiple stamp sets. So I'll be using the little text stamp from that set. I'm planning on using Apothecary, but I think I end up not using it. That little guy doesn't want to stay on there. I'm going to be using the poison, and I've never even opened this pa package yet. I've had it since last year. And I'm going to be using this little spattering stamp. And then I'm going to be using just the just the dude, his hipster, the dude wicked hipster. And I want to use the little bottles there. Uh, so to start out, I'm going to create a background using some watercolor paper. And I'm going to be using the Distress um, Mica Stains uh, for the base of the background. So I'm going to put a new paper towel in. I'm just going to squirt a little bit of water on my paper. And then I'm going to start to go in with the Mica Stains. I'm just going to be using three colors of the Mica Stains today. I'm going to be using the Jack-O-Lantern. And I'll be using the Bubbling Cauldron and the purple one can't think of the name of it <laughs> the purple one and not three normal colors that go together but I rather like them and so I'm gonna do the purple and then I'm gonna throw in some green and these are all from the Halloween collection I have the Christmas collection too I've already almost used up the whole blue one the light snow snow flurry blue one and then I'm just gonna go ahead and dry this off and once I've got it completely dry, I'm going to get it wet again just to get some of those drips and dry it off again, dab off any excess. And I'm going to be trimming the paper so I'm not worried about the edges at all. I'm going to add some more water, and I want quite a bit this time. I want my colors to start mixing together, kind of. And I didn't mind if it made brown, but um, get that dried off. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move my splat box, and I'm going to get my trimmer out, and I'm going to trim that down to the size that I need it. Which is going to be 4 by 5 and a quarter standard A2 card size. But you see, I end up clipping off quite a bit of that uh, where it kind of ran off to the sides, and that cleans it up pretty well. And we're not done. Believe me, there's much more to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to pull my um, my rubber piece out of there, my, my padding, so that I can use the stamps. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp on this, I don't know, it's not really a sentence. I'm, I'm not sure what that thing says. Anyway, this bunch of words. And I'm going to go ahead and use Wilted Violet because I just want this to be subtle. And I'm stamping that down with my mini misty stamping tool, my new best friend. And you see it's very subtle on there. It's very hard to see. So I'm going to clean off that stamp and then I'm going to grab the, um, I'm going to grab the, yeah, that stamp, the bunch of dot stamp. And I'm going to take my, um, I'm going to take and use the, my little stamping um, acrylic pad because what I want to do is I want to spray down some of this, um, I'm doing the juniper mist or juniper or something or other. I'm just going to spray it down onto my little piece of silicone and then I'm going to stamp my stamp into it and put some of those blobs on there. Let's get that out of the stamping platform, be easier to do. I'm just going to lay that down on there and it's pretty wet, so it's going to leave wet spots. But we'll go ahead and let that dry, and I'm just going to clean up the rest of this, so I don't want to waste it. I'll put it on a different piece of paper for another day. And we'll just kind of let that dry. And then once it's dried, I'm going to go in one more time with the little splat, splat dot 
oops, bats, whatever, <laughs> and uh, do with some black distress ink. Up towards the top, just, you know, little, little subtle stuff, you know, gives the cards some interest and dimension and dirt and grunge. And the idea of this card is to be, it's, you know, a grungy hipster. Hey, can't beat that. So I'm not going to decide not to use the apothecary stamp. Um, what I want to do here is I'm going to get out my bigger mat here. Um, because it's easier to blend on it. And so let me just wipe it down because it's had a little bit of glitter from my last project. I hadn't cleaned it yet. Um, I want to distress the edges of this and so I'm going to use this little distressing distressing tool and just run it along all of the edges just getting them rough you can use a decal trim or heck you can even just tear the paper carefully but I kind of like for this particular card I like this effect you have to empty out that paper quite often and or find another sharp side and by the way everything here is speeded up double just because it, it's a pretty long video, so wanted to, you know, make sure that I value your time and get these things done quickly as possible. So I'm going to kind of wipe off my little paper mess there. A little, little bit of water to get it all off. And now I, what I want to do is I want to take my brush and my black distress ink, and I want to ink the edges up in black really well. And not minding where it goes on there necessarily, but I do want to make sure that I cover up all the white and including the edges. And this is now you see how I get so dirty because I've just always constantly got my fingers in ink. Uh, and uh, I just have to remember to wipe them off time to time to keep fingerprints off of my projects. But pretty simple, just go around the whole thing. Make sure all the edges are filled in with black. And that's my background. I'm going to go ahead and mop that up as well with my little mop paper there. And clean off my surface. And now I'm going to get started on my hipster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my mini Misty again. I'm going to grab a white piece of um, just regular cardstock and put my hipster guy in there and i'm going to stamp him out with the black soot archival ink and you'll see i use several different types of ink in here and this thing i had a bubble or something i could not get it to stamp it took like four tries to get it to fully stamp and mind you it was a brand new stamp i didn't do anything to condition it i just put it on the platform and went for it there's just that one spot around his one eye that just does not want to fill in so i just keep keep going until i get it filled in oh still yep and there's so there's a little bubble and i was gonna try and lift it to get it out but decided against it because i didn't want it to move so I'm just going to ink up really well on that one spot and put most of the pressure right there on that one spot. Sometimes when you're laying the stamp down, you don't notice there's a bubble, but there he's stamped out. I'm happy with it. And we'll go ahead and clean him off. And I want to make sure that's good and dry before I start ink blending on it. And I am going to be using ink, and I do test it. Um, by the way, I will be fussy cutting this guy out, so I'm not worried about going outside the lines or anything like that. But just making sure it's dry. And at first I think I'm going to do it with oxide, and then I change my mind and decide to do it with ink. So get out my little ink cubes and my little finger blending brushes. And I'm going to start here with the antique linen, get some color to his face. I'm going to keep his teeth white because, you know, hipsters have really white teeth. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really couldn't say. I don't know any. 
But this hipster has really white teeth, and he has the, he has a cool mustache. Um, something that we used to see on guys a lot in the 70s. <laughs> Don't let me date myself. My husband had one. In fact, he still has one like that. <laughs> it's bushy and gray now, but it still exists. And since we're going hipster, I'm going to give him purple hair. I like purple hair. I would have purple hair if I could maintain it, but I tried rainbow hair one time and it looked really cool. It was a pixie cut and it was really short, but um in the end, it, it you know, the white all went away and the color all went away and it just grew back out to gray and mouse. That's the color of my hair. <laughs> so, I'm giving my purple mustache too there. Now I want to darken around the edges, so I'm going to take some vintage photo. And I get these little brushes on Amazon. I think it's about $10 for the pack. And I'm just going to darken in some more around the edges, around the darker parts. Just so he's got some color to his bones. <laughs> so... Now make sure it's nice and dry. And first I cut roughly around the edge with my big scissors because I, I fight with paper trying to cut it out. This is 120 pound cardstock, so it's definitely a thick paper to cut. But it does help in trying to preserve his mustache to have very thick cardstock. And um, I do want to cut pretty precisely on this. At first I was thinking, well, I'll just stamp them down, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the best of my ability to get all those little flecks of hair and things like that. And for the most part, I drive the paper and operate the scissors. And I, I know that I probably make this look easy, but there's I've had a lot, a lot of practice. Last year, when we weren't as busy at work, before I got promoted, let's just say, I had downtime when I was working, you know, I was, I was still helping customers, but I work on the telephones. And so during that downtime, every morning I would take stickers from, you know, paper packs and stick them onto heavier paper and then fussy cut them out all day long, hours spent fussy cutting while I was talking on the phone with customers. So had lots of practice. That's okay about that little white space there because I will be doing black around the edges. Okay, we got hipster face cut out. And it's gonna be kind of weird because there's gonna be a face floating there, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take a black ink here and edge it. Same way I edged everything else. So just to kind of grunge it up some more. And you'll see, I'm gonna be using some um, other uh, media on him and on the card um, panel itself. I got him all grunged up the way I like him. And I'm gonna set him aside and clean up my mess here. Let's go ahead and yeah, I get that some drippity going. Wipe the rest off my rag and a little hand sanitizer on my hands to kind of get the surface ink off. It doesn't clean them by any means, but it keeps them clean enough that I don't mess up my card. And I'm just going to start thinking about placement of this guy because, you know, I do want to add these, these little elements to it. So I get out the two jar dies. I know there are three dies, but I, for whatever reason, I couldn't find the third die in there, so that's all right. I'm going to cut out some stars as well, and I am going to be cutting those with uh, using watercolor paper, the bumpy side up, because um, I want the texture. So I'm just going to take those, tape those down and run through my vagabond, and by the way, my scissors there, I think they're just some plain old Fisker scissors. Um, they're still fairly sharp, but they don't have a serrated edge. edge. I have the Tim Holtz ones, which cut really well, but I didn't, I didn't want a serrated edge. So I'm just going to poke all these little parts out. 
grab my pokey tool. So I'll get them all out. There we go. And I'll just set my dies aside. You can see my table's uneven there because stuff rolls away. I think the whole house is uneven. It was built in the 70s. I don't know. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to put, I want to stamp that poison sticker on that bottle. And um, so I'm going to put it on just a tiny stamping block because I like the control of it. And I'm going to go in with the Wilted Violet. And let's see how this works. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. And I didn't press in the middle. I didn't like the way it came out. So I'm just going to change my mind and go another route. And I'm just going to color the whole bottle of purple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp that little stamp in black instead. So I'm going to use my VersaFine Clair because I've got that fine detail in there. And just stamp it out on the bottle. Give it a good bit of pressure there. Just the weight of my fingers and there we go. I'm happy with that. Pick that up and set it aside. And I'm going to go to work on the big bottle. So I'm sticking with Halloween colors. I'm gonna do use the Twisted Citron. It's the clo closest thing to a, kind of a neon Halloween green that I have. And that's with the Oxide. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the, it's really hard to move stuff around on this piece of silicone, but that's why I like to color things in on it, because you watch. I'm gonna go in with this, uh, pumpkin and it doesn't move around when I'm trying to color it. It just stays where I want it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and get that top piece done. Okay, there's that bottle. Now the other bottle, which is actually a second part, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, label in black soot ink. The, the smaller kind of roundy bottle has two parts to it, but I'm going to use the other part as a different jar because I couldn't find that other jar. I'm just going to grunge up the end, edge of this one. And then um, with the other jar, I want to use some more of those mica stains. I want to use the candlelit, or I think it's something candlelight. So I'm gonna pick these up. I'm gonna try and pick these up and I'm gonna put them in my splat box um, so that I can spray them. There we go, get myself a little tool. You, long nails, you can't pick stuff up. Short nails, you can't pick stuff up. It is what it is. I'm gonna take all these little parts and lay them in the splat box. And the one on the left, I'm gonna use the Crooked Broomstick. And then I'm gonna use the Candlelight flickering candle on the ones on the right on the stars in the one jar I love this uh, broomstick this crooked broomstick it's my favorite of these so we want to get those dry once they're dry I'm just going to set them aside I'm going to put everything together here so I'm just going to use a little bit of my um, liquid glue here this is my reptile adhesive I'm going to glue the parts down to the bottle. Make sure I get that on correctly. I guess that you'd call this not a bottle, but a decanter. And i got to get that little black piece, that little label on there. You could put little stuff on the little labels if you wanted to. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and place the label on this bottle. Make sure it's good and stuck down in the right place. And just, I don't care if I get it dirty because I'm about to get them dirty anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> I get back out my black uh, distress ink, my black uh, soot distress ink. And I'm going to just distress all the edges here of these bottles. Just quickly running my brush through. 
and there's no way I'm not going to get it on my fingers doing it this way because there's just no choice. It just is what it is. I'm not going to distress the stars. I want those stars to be pristine. Let me go ahead and wipe off the excess ink off my hands here again and move everything out of my way. Uh, what I want to do here, and here's where I get, you know, I get a big mistake. I've got this Distress Texture Paste. It's a crackle, and it's not that old. It's probably six, seven months old, and I've had a piece of plastic on it, but it's still, it has dried out to the point where it doesn't want to stick very well, and it doesn't want to spread very well. But I'm going to attempt to spread it through this stencil here. And you'll see what happens. It's kind of funny, not funny, not funny, because um, I didn't get what I intended on getting. And you see, I have a hard time with it there because it's so thick. It's gonna take two hands to get it out of the jar. So it's still usable, but only in very thin layers. Um, if you try to do a thick layer, it'll peel up on you. See, it's not even wanting to see what happens when I pull up the stencil. It just doesn't even want to, it just comes up right with the stencil. So I just decide to just spread it around there willy nilly. And we'll let it distress itself up there. And it will absorb a lot of that color, but I will have to add some color back. And I want to add some texture to his hair as well. But I'm not going to use the crackle. I've got a matte texture paste that I'm hunting down. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done the glossy because the matte, I'd lose a whole lot of detail in his hair. Um, you know, I try to add the detail back, but it just, it's not the same because he's got those really cool, like, wispy hair things. So I'm just going to lay this, this is a matte texture paste, I'm just going to lay it down on here and spread it around his head. make sure that I've got, you know, enough. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna start using the tip of this tool to try and carve his hair, hair parts back in. Probably should have left it, but live and learn. You guys learn from me. <laughs> it's, a, you know, it's a lot of work trying to scratch these in and I'm not, you know, I'm not looking at any specific hair pattern. I'm just trying to get the hair. <laughs> And, you know, I'll have to let that dry. It'll dry pretty quickly. And I want to pull off any big old chunks. And he's still got messy hipster hair, that's for sure. But again, that stuff kind of dries sort of opaque. So I'll have to add color back into it. And you see here, this is already starting to crackle. And I'm going to help it along with my dryer. Not too much. I want it to do the majority of its cracking prior to trying to dry it. And you see it left a stencil imprint in there anyway, but you won't be able to see that because Hipster Head will be covering it. So... Once I've got that dry, it's completely dry, I'm going to go back in and add some color to his hair and then go back in and grunge it up again. And then I want to add color to my crackle paste, but you see there's some spots that will lift. And so if they're going to, if they're going to lift, I'm going to go ahead and push them off now because I'm going to be doing stuff to this. And here I'm just thinking about placement again, where, where I'm gonna put everything. Um, and I need, I need something for these um, bottles to sit on, so I'm gonna make a plank here. I'm just gonna run this um, piece of plain white cardstock through my, um, through an embossing folder in my Vagabond. And not too deep, it doesn't have to be anything. It's only gonna be like a half an inch or maybe five eighths of an inch wide across 
So, but what I want to do is I'm going to add some color. Obviously, I don't want it to be white. And I decided to go in with more black, and I'm just using black suit ink. Nothing, nothing big, nothing fancy, just filling in the color. And I'm going to go ahead and take my trimmer, and I'm going to trim this down to where I need it. About that big. Yeah, there we go. And that's going to serve as a ledge once I get done with it. I want to go ahead and, you know, cover up those white edges. And I think I'm going to need to trim that down to the right size. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of eyeball it. And uh, that's crooked, so I'm going to straighten that out and then continue to um, fill in the edges here. Look at the black on my fingers, y'all. That's how it all gets underneath my fingernails. I can't get it out. And you can't get those scrubbies under your nails. Nail brush doesn't do it. I just have to wait for it to wear out. So I'm using a piece of black, kind of thick foam tape um, to prop that up where I want it. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw some glue on here as well because my surface is chunky. I wanna make sure it stays stuck down. And that's just kind of sit it on there so it's straight and the glue gives me a tiny bit of leeway to move it around so I'm happy with that now I'm just gonna think about where I want things maybe I don't know maybe not <laughs> Uh, that's it. That Sometimes that is the longest part of card making is deciding where you want to put your elements. And, you know, you want to make sure that things are spaced out to where everything kind of looks um, comfortable. I, it's, it's a hard word to articulate, but not necessarily even, but balanced or something like that. So it, always looking for balance. And uh, now I'm gonna do some work here on, um, add some color back into this crackly. Um, going in with my wilted violet. And then I'll go in with the twisted citron. And just kind of blend that through. And then I'm gonna go in with the spiced pumpkin, picked pumpkin, ripe pumpkin. I don't know. Pumpkin. <laughs> so uh, next thing I want to do here is I want those cracks to be more stand out. So I'm going to find my black um, distress crayon. And I'm just going to color over it and then just kind of rub the crayon in. And that's going to make those cracks show up better. And this is messy business. I'm, I'm not going to lie. If you want to do mixed media either wear gloves or I don't know. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing on his hair, just to kind of make those lines stand out some. And just edge him all the way around the edge to make sure he's nice and dark around the edges. Now I don't know, you know, the point of the floating head with no body, but it's all right. <laughs> that little one sh shadow spot on his forehead looks like a bat, doesn't it? I did not notice that when I was working with it, but I'm when I'm editing this video, I'm noticing that that looks just like a bat. And honestly, I thought about giving him some sort of a tattoo on his forehead, but I couldn't think of anything that, you know, would lay nicely on there with that little blob of shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead, before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down to a black card base. I'm just gonna kind of press down on it until I know the edges are, are nice and snug. And now I'm gonna work on placing my items. So what I'll do is, first of all, I, I want to pop everything up. So I'm going to pop him up first with um, not as high as the other. This is some um, thinner, less deep foam tape. 
I think I got it at the dollar store. And um, I'm just gonna kind of lay it around there because I don't want I don't want him popped up as much as the plank or as much as the one of the bottles. I just want him popped up a little. And I certainly was not gonna fussy cut a bunch of those. <laughs> one is all I can do when it comes to detailed cutting. I'm going to go ahead and pick that off of there, pick the backing off, and then I'm going to add glue so that I have wiggle room and so that I'm sure that it's going to stay stuck down, especially with dollar store stuff. And I am going to place him down first. And I did decide I want him to be on the left. So next I'm going to start placing down my bottles. Uh, my first decanter is going to go directly against the card, straight down. And my poison decanter is going to pop up right in front of it. And I'm going to use this foam tape, and I'm just going to do a lot of surgery on it to make it all fit properly. Because I like the thickness of this tape. So it's not quite as thick as the black tape. But thicker than the tape that he's on so it will you know stand up a little bit higher just take off the backing add my glue decide on my placement and there we go and last I'm gonna do also pop up this bottle and I'm gonna use the same tape Y'all have so much foam tape of so many kinds. I have squares, circles, dots, you name it. I don't know how that happened. Well, I bought a lot at the dollar store. Then I bought from scrapbook.com. Then I bought from Amazon and just on and on. I just kept buying it. So I have probably enough to last me all year. And I bought it last year. Can't imagine needing more. If I do, then I stayed real busy. Okay, yep, I like that right there. And I did not do his sunglasses. I didn't want the sunglasses on there today. I'm just going to glue these little stars willy-nilly. Not really willy-nilly, but strategically. I don't want them straight up and down, let me put it that way. Um, and then put one right there on his little forehead. Yeah, there's your tattoo, buddy. Grab one and put it right there. And I'll take that smallest one. And we'll place it right there. That way I've got a little bit of balance in my card. And the last thing I need to do is just stamp a sentiment. And yep, no place to put that apothecary one. So I'm going to do trick or treat. And I'm going to stamp that directly onto the card. I'm not going to stamp it onto paper or anything. I'm going to get my small stamping block that gives me lots of control. And I'm going to get my uh, Lawn Fawn Black Licorice Ink. It's my favorite, um, you know, for a small, um, for the size of it, especially for hand stamping. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp down the trick or treat. And guys... That's pretty much going to do it for this card today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go out and try some mixed media. It's kind of fun. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.